Good morning, Chester San United Methodist Church. And we welcome you to this community of worshipers, and we are just so glad to have you here and to have you here safely. Uh, I do want to go over a few rules with you, though. Um, there are no donuts in the church parking lot. Please keep your cars steady, slow as you go in and out. We don't want anybody hurt because we know some of you are hot rodders out there. So. Let's just take it easy. Um, we welcome you on this beautiful day. Uh, we are still in transition as we wait for Pastor Esta. She starts this Wednesday, and we'll have her first Sunday of preaching two Sundays from now. Uh, today, Jason is with us to bring us our message, so we welcome Jason. Uh, and then next Sunday for Communion Sunday, Paul Arnold will be here, uh, so it will be a fantastic time. Uh, this is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it and let us prepare our hearts for worship. Please stand and join me in the call to worship. Loving God, we come to you in worship and thanksgiving. You are greater than we can understand. 
Open our eyes that we may see the wonderful truths you have shown to us in Jesus. You are more loving than our hearts can respond to. Help us give ourselves to you in worship so that we learn what you want us to be. You are wiser than we can know. Still our minds as we worship you so that we can understand the things you are saying to us. Loving God, in Jesus you chose to come to the world in humility. You chose the path the world saw as foolish. You used what the world considered weak. We worship and adore you. Amen. Our opening hymn is Ask Ye What Great Thing I Know, number 163. Today's scripture is from John 15, verse 13, the English Standard Version. Greater love has no one than this, that someone lay down his life for his friends.
Thanks, Ruth and Bill and Chancel Choir. Everyone give them a little round of applause. Good morning, church. Good morning. Wow, everyone's awake. Love it. Have you ever heard a story so powerful that it left you in Maybe even some wonder as to what might come next. While prepping for today and what topic I would preach, I brought this concept to our preaching Now, for those of you that uh, don't know, the church service downstairs, the preachings have classes. They for volunteers to come teach them and guide them in their, in their faith. What does it mean? First Timothy chapter, am I off a little bit? Okay. First Timothy, First Timothy chapter four, verse twelve. This one wasn't all the way in front yet. Hold on. Hot. Until I walk away. Bill, you got to stay with me the whole time. No. I, I, can do, I can do that. On second thought. All right. So, 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 12. Don't let anyone think less of you. All believers in what you say and the way you live in your life, your faith, and your purity. So, up on the screen, you can see a beautiful picture of our preteens. So, again, if you've not had the opportunity to, to go up to their classroom and teach during first service, I highly recommend it. But last month, I asked the kids, while I was trying to figure out what I was going to preach, you know, what should I preach about? Give me some topics. Give me some ideas. The usual ones came out, you know, God, Jesus, Holy Spirit. And I said, okay, well, give me, give me some ideas. Give me some, uh, some real themes, you know, some things you guys think about. And three themes stuck to me and were pretty amazing that I'll use today. The first, what it means to always be there for people. Okay, that's a good one. In a bad world, be the good. And the third one, make a sacrifice for another person. Some absolutely powerful topics coming out of kids between 12 and 13 years old. Who here would have had topics like that at that age? Raise your hand. Yes, I am right there with you. So like I mentioned before, a dual faith development right in front of you from our children. And let's point to some scripture for confirmation on that. Joel chapter 2, verses 28 through 29. And afterward, I will pour out my spirit on all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your old men will dream dreams. Your young men will see visions. Even on my servants, both men and women, I will pour out my spirit in those days. One of the joys of the Christian life is that God's Spirit resides in all of us at all times. Each and every one of us, children included. Children are worthy of respect and dignity because God counts them as worthy and even as chosen vessels 
for his most important of messages. The Gospel of John, chapter 1, verses 9 through 13. The true light that shines on everyone was coming into the world. The word was, with, the word was in the world, but no one knew him. Even though God had made the world with his word, he came into his world, but his own nation did not welcome him. Yet some people accepted him and put their faith in him. So he gave them the right to be children of God. They were not God's children by nature or because of any human desires, but God himself was the one who made them his children. In one sense, all humans are children of God, but in eternal salvation sense, only those who receive Jesus are the children of God. We have the extreme honor of making God's appeal directly to our children, accept Jesus and become a child of God. So this morning, I'm gonna do my best to take these three themes that the preteens provided into a sermon called Sacrificial Love. And to start, let's hear, let's hear one of those stories that leaves you in awe and wonder and pulls at your heart. Thanks to Grayson Tenbarge in our preteen class. Now, I couldn't find exactly what Grayson was talking about in his story, exact details, who it was from, where it was um, laid out in, and the time frame. But I took what Grayson gave me and I put together a story that I call the parent's sacrifice. There was a story about a young child that woke up after a long night's sleep. The child remembered not feeling the best, but this morning the child felt a bit different. The child flashed back to memories of being in the hospital and having so many tests and procedures being performed. The child remembered feeling so weak and losing a grasp on life. Then the child remembered someone whispering in their ear, don't worry, I'll make this better. The child looked over at the table by the bed and saw a picture of the child's father. The child's mom came in and told the child that everything's going to be all right. The child won't have any more medical procedures and the child's body will get back to normal. The mother told the child that the father had made a sacrifice so the child could live. Such an incredible, such a, a powerful story coming out of one of the children in our church. A story about sacrificial love and a story that'll set up our lesson for this morning about what it means to always be there for people in a bad world be the good and three make a sacrifice for another person second corinthians chapter 5 verse 7 says for we live by faith not by sight so what does it mean to always be there for people the tough reality of this life is every one of us struggles. Every person at some point has felt true loneliness. Each of us has responsibility to act and to be eager to help others. In the hard times, we need to look for ways to lift up those around us, not for ways to put them down. Everyone around you is an opportunity to work together to help one who is struggling. Those that are fall, fallen around us should neither be neglected nor rejected. They need to be restored. Amen? Amen. The challenge is knowing, the challenge is, is trying to figure out when to let someone work through what's going on in their life and when you should step in and help. Does anyone struggle with that besides me? Yes. Let prayer guide you and help you. When challenged and unsure in situations like this, the serenity prayer can help focus you and focus on the situation. God, grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, the courage to change the things I can, the wisdom to know the difference, living one day at a time, enjoying one moment at a time, accepting hardships, 
as the pathway to peace, taking as he did the sinful world, as it is, not as I would have it, trusting that he will make all things right if I surrender to his will, so that I may be reasonably happy in this life and supremely happy with him forever and ever in the next. Amen. To accept the things I cannot change. The courage to change the things that I can. And the wisdom to know the difference. May each and every one of you have the courage, the wisdom, and the peace to act for another. To truly act and be there for another. So the second theme for today... What does it mean to be good in a not-so-good world? Let's talk about two ways. First, to be a good person, you must love God and love others. Amen? Amen? The whole Bible is summed up in the two commands, that you should love God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, with all your strength, and that you should love your neighbor as yourself. See, there, there's no command in the Bible to love yourself. Rather, the Bible assumes that we probably love ourselves quite well already. If we would just love others as much as we love ourselves, we would fulfill God's holy law. We cannot even begin to love God until we are reconciled to God through faith in Jesus Christ. We must begin by realizing that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. John 3.16 Any love that we show toward God is a response to his great love for us in sending his son to die for our sins. Share that kind of love. The source, the second is, the source of any human goodness is to walk by faith in the Holy Spirit. Paul has a message to the Galatian church. It's a little lengthy, but I'm going to read part of it now. Galatians 5, chapter 16, or I'm sorry, verse 16 through 18. My counsel is this, live freely, animated, and motivated by God's Spirit. Then you won't feed the compulsions of selfishness. For there is a root of sinful interest in us that is at odds with a free spirit. Just as the free spirit is incompatible with selfishness, these two ways of life are contrary to each other, so that you cannot live at times one way and at times another way according to how you feel on any given day. Why don't you choose to be led by the spirit and so escape the erratic compulsions of a law-dominated existence? That is a mouthful of a scripture. But what Paul is, is telling us is to walk by faith so that we do not carry out the desire of the flesh. We walk by the Spirit, by faith. A walk is a step-by-step -step process in which you commit your weight to your legs and trust them to sustain you. As you walk in the Spirit, it's a step-by-step -step dependence on the indwelling of the Spirit of God. You rely upon God in every situation for power to overcome temptations that stem from this world. As we walk, and as that walk becomes a habit, a daily habit, the fruits of the Holy Spirit are gradually formed in your life. Your good deeds, then, your good deeds are not something that you do for God, but rather but rather something that God does through you. I try my best to live by the mindset to always look for the good in every person in every situation. I don't do it great, but I strive for that. I strive to look for the good. And my challenge is to each and every one of you here is to try this mindset in your life, to live it. Through your faith, your love for God, and letting the Holy Spirit guide you, 
May you live with a mindset of finding the good in every person, in every situation, today and every day forward. Amen? Amen. In Titus chapter 2, verses 2, 7, and 8, And everything set them an example by doing what is good. In your teaching show integrity, seriousness, and soundness of speech that cannot be condemned so that those who oppose you may be ashamed because they have nothing bad to say about us. Love God, love others, walk by faith in the Holy Spirit. Our third and last theme for today is what is sacrificial love? 1 Timothy chapter 1, verse 5, the aim of our charge is to love is, is love that issues from a pure heart and a good conscience and a sincere faith. Agape love, the agape love of God is most perfectly seen in the cross that Jesus Christ bore. This cross has become the symbol within the Christian faith with, which represents the sacrificial love of God. A piece of wood used by Romans to crucify criminals is exactly where all of sinful humanity deserve to be for the punishment of their sins toward a holy God. Yet God, in his love for us, took our place. While we were sinners, Christ died for us. Romans chapter 5 verse 8. Through the sacrifice of Jesus on the cross, we see a love unlike anything the world has ever known. This agape love is what saved and restored humanity's broken relationship with God. God is the one who initiates the restoration. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. God gave himself for the world in sacrificial love and welcomes the worst of the worst. As Jesus laid down his life, taking our sins upon himself, nailing it to the cross, we are to look, to look to him who loved us so lavishly, and we are to love others with this type of, of love. So how can I practice sacrificial love? Three ways. First, when we love, when we want to love others sacrificially, again we look to Jesus. The life that Jesus lived was marked with serving others. This is so beautifully captured in the washing of the disciples' feet and was an opportunity for him to demonstrate what he wanted his disciples to do. The second, love those that are marginalized in society. Jesus loved those who were outsiders in society. He touched and healed those with diseases and sicknesses. He dined with tax collectors and sinners to the shock of the religious leaders of the day. He spoke to women and had good relationships, relationships with them. The agape love of God breaks down barriers. Yet, do we put up our own walls when we choose, when we choose who to love? Do we show preferential treatment to different groups of people? Do we avoid those uncomfortable situations that are right in front of us? All of us have fallen short of the glory of God. Romans 3.23. And there is not one of us who is righteous. Romans 3.10. Knowing that Jesus did all, all that on the cross for us. How can we not live a life of sacrificial love? Reaching out to the poor, the marginalized, the lost, and those whom God loves and are made in his own image. And the third way to practice sacrificial love, love and serve the body of Christ, the church that's gathered here and out in the world. 
It's the mark of the believer to love one another, especially in the church, which is the body of Christ. Jesus said that all people will know that we are his disciples if we have love for another. John 13, 35. Practically loving the body of Christ is the mark of being a disciple of Christ. There is so much that seems to divide the church in the world we live in today. Our love for Jesus and one another should set each and every one of us apart. Amen? There's so much that we need to come back. We need to come back to the cross and repentance for. The world is not always going to accept us. It's the fact of the matter. The world will always reject us. However, we need to be a people who lay down their lives for one another, serving one another, and supporting each other. Can our brothers and sisters in the church experience this sacrificial love from us so that we can unite together and carry this out in the world? The Gospel of John, chapter 15, verse 13. Greater love has no one than this, than someone lay down his life for his friends. Love like Jesus. Love those hurting and love your church family. So let's bring this sermon together and reflect on each of the questions that the preteens brought to us and reflect on your life and your faith story. What does it mean to always be there for people? May you have the courage, the wisdom, and the peace to be there for another. What does it mean to be the good in a not so good world? Always look for the good in every person, in every situation. What is sacrificial love? Greater love has no one than this, that someone lay down his life for his friends. Amen.
Will you please pray with me the prayer of the people as on the screen? God, our deliverer, you walk with the meek and the poor, the compassionate and those who mourn, and you call us to walk humbly with you. When we are foolish, be our wisdom. When we are weak, be our strength that as we learn to do justice and to love mercy, your rule may come as blessing. Amen. The altar flowers today are given in celebration of Deborah and Gary Beard's 35th wedding anniversary. Happy anniversary. Uh, also in celebration of Patty Frey's son Shane on his birthday. So congratulations to those. Um, sympathy to John and Sue Kaiser on the loss of John's sister, Chris, who died last week. Uh, also, please remember Renee Messler, who is recovering from surgery right now, as well as Amelia Graff, who is recovering from surgery. Uh, we also want to have prayers lifted for Joanne Cundiff, uh, who's had an allergic reaction to something. So she's at home right now, uh, kind of covered in a rash, and she's very uncomfortable. So. Um, be with her because without her, this church could grind to a, a halt. So uh, if there is one thing we want in this transition, it's Joanne Cundiff, nice and healthy. So please be in prayer for Joanne. Um, also be with Pastor Heather as she gets ready uh, to take over at Evansville. Uh, be with Esta as she gets ready to start this Wednesday with us and her first Sunday preaching in a couple weeks. Uh, be with Pastor Paul, who preaches with us next Sunday and leads us through communion. Uh, if you would, please, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Lord, we, we thank you for being with us because we know you're there. We don't always acknowledge it. But we know you're there with us on this journey. We thank you for guiding us through that dark maze of life. And, and some of us feel like that, that maze never ends and we're never going to get out. Um, help to show those people the light. Help to know that there, there is a brilliant end to that maze and that good times are coming. Be with those that have trouble finding the good in people. Most of the time that means that they're having trouble finding the good in themselves, Lord. Help find that inner peace. Help find that inner good. Help them to be at rest with themselves so they can find that wonderfulness in everybody. Be with those that we have just lifted up. Be with the celebrations. Be with those that we're praying for. Be with the unspoken prayers that are out there sitting with us today. Even as I look out, I see a congregation that is heading through that dark maze right now. Not everybody's at rest right now. Not everybody's in that good spot. Help them to find your guidance, your wisdom, and your mercy, Lord. And then help them to find that good in others. As always, we find that good in the prayer that you have taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us the trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. As always, you can reach out to the church with anything that you need. Contact us. Call Joanne. Hopefully she'll be in the office tomorrow. Uh, if not, please send an email, uh, go down to our website, go to chestertonumc.org, contact us, uh, just let us know anything that you need. Uh, if you have not signed up, 
get the weekly emails or the newsletter, please make sure you do that, especially in this time of transition. Um, as part of that time of transition, once again, I'll remind you that next week, Paul Arnold will be here. Um, we almost can't thank Paul Arnold enough. Paul has really filled in over the past years for us when we've needed him. Uh, it's always good to have Paul and his wife here. So uh, he'll be here to once again lead us through communion next week, communion Sunday. Uh, and then the following Sunday, Esther will be preaching. Uh, a reminder that we're getting a couple of world-class musicians in here. Uh, it's the first time that I've known in my 31 years that the pastor has had a piano in her office. Uh, it was kind of good to, I peeked in and I saw the piano sitting there and that must be Esther's personal piano. That's cool. Uh, so that'll make our meetings a lot more fun. We'll probably just play piano through our meetings and do some singing. Um, because of that transition, it's time for name tags again. Uh, so be looking out in the commons area beforehand, uh, whether we get our physical name tags or if we just have the adhesive name tags out. Uh, get used to wearing your name tags again for a few months uh, as Esta gets used to learning all of your names. Uh, she's learning names between two different services. And if there are people that have joined here lately or you are guests, it's just good to meet you and good to have your name on there so we can all get to know you. Uh, as always, if you have brought your gifts, uh, at the back of the sanctuary we have the box where you can place your offerings if you'd like to do that during our offering time as Ruth plays. Or you can, once again, continue to mail it into the church office or set it up online where it just deducts it from your checking or savings account every week. Um, it's just good to be a cheerful giver. Uh, and the money just goes to making this community of worshipers and our ministry and our missions even better. Uh, so keep that in mind as we listen to Ruth playing her beautiful music.
Lord, use these offerings and these blessings to further your mission and our mission for your church. In his name we pray. Amen. Please remain standing if you are able for our closing hymn. loving everyone that you see. Go in Jesus' name. Amen. Mm -hmm.